talk talk about the <clears throat> the elephant in the room imaginary numbers so where did they come from why do they exist and blah de blah de blah so i'm just going to go over what i know about imaginary numbers how they work mistakes like e to the i pi equals minus one um it's more like um one to the i pi is equal to minus one um so anyway, so that's that's the, that's the equation that invented imaginary numbers because minus one by minus one is is uh, one. So the square root of minus one. What number do you have to get the square root of to get i? Now the first thing I'm going to look at is a thing I call number con con concurrency, right? Now, the first simple number concurrency is between the two number lines, um, Fahrenheit and Celsius. So Celsius and Fahrenheit. So if you put the two number lines beside each other, 0, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and then you have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, minus... One, making a cake here for you guys. Three, four. So, um, so let's, uh, I'm gonna switch those around. Celsius and Fahrenheit. I, I did them wrong. I think. Yeah, I might. I might still have done them wrong, but um, I'll have a look. Okay. So top line is Celsius, or yeah, top line is Celsius, bottom line is Fahrenheit. Now they're concurrent, which means they run alongside each other. Now their zeros are actually shouldn't be aligned like that. They should be off center. So um, we'll talk about that, that later. So the zeros should be off center from each other. And uh, one, two, three, that's minus one, two, three, four, five, and minus one, two, three, four, five. The actual size of the numbers are different. So if you have the Celsius number line, You'll have um, you'll have bigger intervals between temperature than the Fahrenheit number line. So they're concurrent number lines. They go traveling in the same direction. They're just different sizes and different um, origins or different zeros. So I can just this, disalign this the zero. I'll pretend that's the zero. So that's the zero there on with the Fahrenheit line, and it doesn't align with the with the zero on the Celsius number line. So that's number concurrency. Okay, so if you take that principle and then you flip it, so one number line is going, I'll use a red for the other number, for the for the not. Green will be the imaginary or the standard number line. So one, two, three, four, five, minus zero, minus one, minus two, minus three. Talk amongst yourselves, people. Okay, and then you have one, two, three, four, zero, minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, and minus five. So I'll put the red line, number line on top of the line, right? So that's what the square root of a minus number is, is two concurrent number lines except they're flipped to each other see the minuses go out the back on on the green one on the imaginary number line and on the real number line they go out in this direction the minuses and the positives go on that in the green line and the reds go on that so they're it's their concurrent number lines but they're flipped now you can do interesting things with that which is you can have number lines that run at angles to each other so they run at angles to each other. So certain values will be worth certain ones on other ones. And then you can expand and contract them like the, the Celsius and Fahrenheit line. And then you can do things like curves, curved concurrent number lines. So like that. So the curve creates different values along the, the two number lines. So it's, it's, um, it's a bit like a function is basically how it works. Um, Okay, the other thing that, um, the other thing, do I have a piece of paper? Uh, 
the other. Um, let's see. Sorry about this. Okay, so. Um, the other thing is if one, the complex numbers are a bit different than the imaginary numbers relationship to ordinary numbers. So the complex numbers basically are like that. And what the complex numbers do is they make it so the imaginary numbers have no relationship to the, re to the real numbers. And that's why you have to put them as plus because you have to put them both. Technically, you should just create a symbol instead of using the plus symbol. It's basically a vector. It's like a vector, but they have no relationship to each other. They have no crossover as in that number can be any number on that number line and it won't be related to that number line at all. So it's, it's concurrent number lines that aren't related to each other. You could call them Brady number lines if you looked at my Brady number video. Um, so that's how they do that. That's another way of, of dealing with imaginary numbers is by treating them like a, a, a fully tangential vector. Um, the other thing is with the relational idea that I put in the other video, if you put like um, imaginary number, say, or a complex number two plus three i, like that, that, that um, if you treated that just as a single number, it's, and you plug it into relationials, you can have relational rules, especially for those numbers, and especially for the multiplications and the, the divisions and the taking away. Technically, you, you don't need multiplication, take away, and division. Those symbols are just a set of relationials. So you can create your own sets of relationials and get rid of the whole idea of, of definites, like pluses and minuses and all that. So that's basically how um, how imaginary numbers work. I like to think of them as an inverted numbers. Um, so they're concurrent, like the two number lines, Celsius and Fahrenheit, except they're the same size and in the opposite direction. Um, so really, 2 is equal to minus 2i. So that's what, so that formula there, 2 is equal to minus 2i. So depending on which number line you're on, will depend on how you use the relation yules to move them up and down the number line. So you might get several simultaneous answers at the same time that are both right. Um, that's another thing in maths. The logic and maths kind of go ha hand in hand because of this one rule. Mathematicians are always looking for just one answer to a problem or all the answers to a problem. And that's all they'll accept, like the square root of two or the square root of four is two and minus two. Um, but you can have other answers that you haven't seen yet and you can create new answers. So the problem with mathematicians is they're, is they're for their proofs, they're looking for all the possible answers. So there's no creative and new answers. And the second one is for logic, they're looking for only a single answer. That's what really the definition of logic is, is everything only has one answer. And that's it, you can only have one answer. And that's basically one of the key laws of logic. Whereas the truth is you can have, nearly every question can have more than one answer. So like the square root of four can be two and minus two. So when it comes to logic, when people are looking for logic, which is basically another form of definiteness they're looking that for that there's one answer to the problem. There's no choice. Definiteness means that there's no choice. It's just the one answer and that's it. So in life, if you want to get away from that sort of behavior and live your own life, stop trying to look for one answer to a problem and do what you want to do. So that's my video on imaginary numbers and the meaning of life and scary stuff like um, what I look like with a marker in my mouth. Hopefully this will be funny because I've completely ruined the joke by slowing it down. But anyway, here we go. <laughs> yeah, that, that was all right. It wasn't that funny. Um, jokes are kind of like shocks, surprised shocks. Anyway. So that's my video on imaginary numbers. I hope you liked it.